Welcome back to CEO Money. I'm Michael Yorba. We have Giovanni Gallucci uh, with us right now. He is our digital strategist, that we, our go-to guy for this. So welcome back to the show, Giovanni. Oh, howdy, Michael. All right. You want to start off talking about what's been going on with Facebook. Let's, let's do that. Yeah. So uh, Facebook had its uh, earnings call here recently, and uh, great news for investors. They uh, posted yet again market uh, our, our you know uh, record profits, uh, forty seven billion uh, I think year over year, um, and uh, that's that's much better than they did in Q four uh, last year. Um, some interesting stuff that came out of the call though was that uh, we expected them uh, to gain a lot more new users on the platform than they have. So I think that they're. They're in a situation where the platform is becoming saturated, and they still had user growth, but uh, based upon what we expected them to do, they're 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 down by about a hundred thousand users based upon our expectations and based upon trends, right? So that's number one. Uh, number two, which is which is shocking to me that that there's not more news about this. Uh, they are they are down uh, fifty million user hours per day on the platform. So every single day on, on, on Facebook around the world, people are looking at content on the platform 50 million fewer hours per day. That is an astronomical and, – and granted, got a, you know, almost two, you know, 2 billion users on the platform. So you know, user per user, that's not a huge number, but it's certainly not the direction you want to go in, right? So when, when we you know, talk about – or, or we remember we, what we talked about last week with with Facebook constricting the amount of organic content on the platform in the news feed from businesses in particular. Um, and now you combine that with the fact that there's less inventory when it comes to time on site for you to purchase ads. What does that do to your ad costs on Facebook? It sends them through the roof, right? Well, well I'm going to tell you what it did to their stock today. We put it up $6.63. Exactly. To a new high. So Facebook made a lot of money, mm -hmm. but it cost me more. It, exactly. And so from a standpoint of where the markets are at, the markets are fine with Facebook squeezing businesses. And, and, I'm, and I'm the first one to say that, look, Facebook is... No, 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 no. The shareholders are fine. The, the shareholders are fine with it. Exactly. The market is yeah, not the so market's happy. Not. Uh, the shareholders are fine with that, and I'll be the first one to say that Facebook can do whatever it wants to. It's funny because driving over the station, I sit there and I talk to myself in the car about how we're going to walk through this, right? Yeah. And part of the conversation I have with myself is, you know what? Mark can do whatever Mark wants. If you don't like it, go play it at another playground, right? And so, you know, for me personally, I don't like most of what Facebook does. But if I don't like it, guess what? I don't have to have an account, which I personally don't, right? But I manage client accounts on there. So I've got to be concerned about what Facebook does to my clients on the platform. So no, number one, what, what that does to, to, to me as someone who works with businesses online is that makes me have to go back to them and say, look, I know that we've got 100,000 followers on, on that, that have thought out said they want to see your content. Too bad. You, you're going to have to buy access to the people that – have said they want to see your your content. Number one, number two, the price is going to go up now because now we, we've got we're, we're being hit from from two different directions. And the place where the viewership is going down on the platform is on the video platform. So Facebook, while it's it's got this you know kind of internal self imposed mandate that it wants to crush YouTube, a lot of the cons area of concern when it comes to what happened in the elections. And what's happening with, you know, especially, uh, you know, the European Union with them kind of cracking down on Facebook, you know, the, the unregulated viral video content that flies through the platform is something that if they don't look at and fix, someone from the outside is going to do it for them. And, of course, we always know that for a company itself, a company always wants to do that before a regulator comes in and decides to do it for them. So that's one thing on Facebook. Moving over to Twitter. You know, we had we had a news article break, you know, last week or a week, about a week ago about, you know, and it's it's funny how the New York Times found this one company, I think it's D, uh, DVM or something like that, who uh, they wrote this big article about this entire, you know, industry of creating fake social media accounts and selling those accounts to businesses, right? And as if that was something new. I mean, that's been going on for years and years and years. And, and again, why that, that comes up to be, you know, bubble up to the top of the, of the, of the culture's, you know, consciousness to, to do something about now 
is is interesting. But anyway, so so federal authorities are looking into this company who was based there. Uh, the the uh, federal government's looking into them now, and you know, and again, that's a situation where if you've got you know people that are using Twitter as a platform to advertise on, and you as an advertiser go to go to a an influencer on Twitter because they have 350,000 users, you think you're getting access to them, I'm sure that it would be interesting to you to find out that 100,000 of those folks were actually fake because you're purchasing ads or you're purchasing content and placing your product or service in that content based upon the number of eyeballs you think it's going to reach. Right. Right. right so, again, right. I'm, I'm thrilled with the idea that they're going to clean it up. And I'll, and, and I'll tell you that we all have fake followers. Um, face our, our Twitter now because they are now terrified of what the federal government is going to do to them. They've now actually gone in and started and started to doing some real house cleaning on on all these fake accounts that are out there because Twitter was motivated to kind of leave them alone and kind of turn a blind eye right. because they've been flatlining too and growth for them if they can put that in their quarterly earnings calls helps the perception of of the platform right and and since this news story came out and Twitter decided to do something about it, I've lost about 10% of my followers on the platform because they were fake. They were bots, and Twitter, and Twitter's cleaned them out. I think that anybody that has a Twitter account, unless you just have like a 1,000 people that are people that you've met that are real people in business, um, if you have, you know, say, two or 3,000 more or, or, or above that number of followers, you should look at the number of followers and see how many of you have lost. And it's nothing you've done. This is Twitter cleaning house, which is a great deal because you weren't earning any, you weren't gaining anything really by having the fake followers. And now you're going to know that the number that you have are actual real bona fide people. Yeah, right? you, you got to have that. One. So um, you'll have to tell me how much time we have here. But um, sure, you got we'll, four minutes, 45 minutes. Great. Four minutes. We'll, we'll, <laughs> bu- we'll bump into the next. Off so they, won't, you go. they won't mind. Right. <laughs> well, you, um, Giovanni, you, you, I hate to break into your thing there, but you bring away. up a. You bring up a really interesting point. Two points, actually. Once when you when you tie the monetization of the Twitter accounts and Facebook accounts to the number of followers for those people who are our influencers, you you invited people to cheat. First of all, oh yeah. Second, and when you look at the possibility of you know these digital monopolies on a global basis, and you talked about some of the p- things that the governments could do, what are some of the things the governments could do to try to bring about maybe, for lack of a better term, a breakup? When you think about these companies and the power they have on a global basis. To, to control the opinions and the thoughts of people. Well, you, you had asked one thing about what happens with, I mean, we, we live in a very real situation where, say, the European Union can pop in and tell Facebook that it's got to act in some way to, to, to make changes, right? Well, that stuff has already happened to Google in the search space. So the European Union came in with, with the, the right to be forgotten law, which basically says that if I am a, a, a citizen of the European Union and I find something online that has to do with a, a criminal background uh, that I might have had, that I have served my sentence or I've paid back society for, that if I go and I find something referencing that in the search engine, not the web page itself that might mention that, but if the search engine pops up and if someone typed in, you know, the name of a business person and whatever the crime it was that they committed and it pops up in Google, that business person can go to Google and say, remove that. I've served my time. You can't have that. It's the right to be forgotten. That only happens in the European Union, though. Right. So it can be done where it splits it up. You can't do that in the United States or other countries that don't fall underneath. Right. To be forgotten. So if the European Union comes in and tells Facebook, you can't accept money or if it happens in the U.S., you can't accept money from somebody for a political ad that doesn't reside in the country for that political ad is bought in Facebook. It'll be a pain in the rear end. But they can split that up and they can make it work in one country and not in another. It's 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 a pain in the rear end, but they can get it done. Giovanni, we've got to go. Thanks for being a guest here. Are we not going to bump into the next show? We're, no, we're not going to do right. that today. See you next week. Thank you. All right, that was Giovanni Gallucci, our digital strategist, our go-to guy on that. You've been listening to CEO Money with Michael Yorba, segment brought to you by Tycon Partners. <laughs>